Welcome to 30 Second Chances, where we ask deep contemplative questions and provide far too little time to formulate thoughtful, reflective answers. My guest today is mix engineer Tim Dolber. Tim, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Great to have you. Okay, you know the drill, 30 seconds on the clock and then on to the next question. Are you ready? Go for it. Question number one, describe your job to a five-year-old. I make things sound good. Five-year-old we're talking to, that's my length of time I'm going to have with them. That's true, that's true, but, but then a five-year-old is going to wonder how. And don't they always sound good? I make them sound good by changing the way they sound so they sound good so you will like it and it's good. Whoa. That's about it for a five-year-old. That's deep. <laughs> okay, next question. What's the strangest thing you've ever done for money that you can admit to in mixed public? <laughs> Wow, I don't know on that one. It would have to be taking on some of these, some projects. There's a couple projects that I've done over the years that especially in forensic audio, uh, cleaning up stuff where someone's recorded a spouse cheating on them. And I'm listening to these bizarre recordings and just shaking my head going, how did I get here? Ooh, <laughs> EMI, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, next question. If you could have one pointless or semi-useless superpower, what would it be and why? <laughs> I would have the superpower to make people be able to have good hygiene. <laughs> See, if you work in the studio long enough, you realize that not all clients share your same respect for hygiene. So you would and, be like uh, deodorant yeah. man. Deodorant man, yes. <laughs> a little roll on on your on your chest or something. And uh, and fresh breath man. Mm, I like that. <laughs> okay, next question. Steve Irwin has you in a headlock. What is he telling the audience about you and your native habitat? <laughs> he's telling the audience that he's going to drown me for giving such a simple answer to his young son about what I do that in my habitat, it's very complicated. <laughs> Going back to the first one. Uh, yeah, that, that, that could probably work. Although you should have done it in an Australian accent, but okay, fair enough. <laughs> Next question. The Tim Dolber action figure has just been released. What two must have accessories are bundled with it? Giant ears, uh, a smile, and as far as accessories, has to have a guitar, has to have a guitar with it. So is the smile, is that one of those tack on things like a Mr. Potato Head kind of smile or what? Yeah, I mean... smile through everything, smile through the tears, smile through the hard work, smile through everything. <laughs> I don't know, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Okay, tell me something ridiculous about yourself that's actually true. Not really sure how ridiculous. I seem, in my, my, my mind, I'm pretty normal. You'd have to ask everyone around me to know the ridiculous stuff. <laughs> um, I really don't have an answer. I'm striking out on this one. Uh. Okay, next question. If a theme song has to play every time you walk in the room, what song would it be and why? Wow, there's too many different moods for it. I, I guess I guess a song feeling that I identify with that uh throughout my whole life when I look back at it in history, so it would be a great theme song, would have to be uh, like the choruses of like Rocket Man, um, that kind of a feel, that kind of a sorrow in spots. Nice. Yeah. Nice, I like that. What's the most creative backhanded compliment you've ever received? Oh my goodness. I, I've gotten more backhanded compliments than anybody in history. Um, <laughs> 
the normal stuff, like if that's the sound you're going for, you certainly got it. Um, my favorite one of all time had to have been, uh, I was featured in the, the cover story of the business section of the LA Times. And someone out of state asked me if they can just go down and get it at their local, you know, the national version of the LA Times. And I said, well, no, the business section is probably just <clears throat> Los Angeles. And they said, oh, so it's not the real LA Times. That'd probably be one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, harsh. Okay, um, fair enough. Uh, yeah. What's the worst mistake you've ever made in a professional setting? Oh, just like everybody deleted something. Someone did a great take and they're like, can I hear that back? I'm like, no, 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 that one. No, let's do another one. <laughs> <laughs> you just roll with it. Oh, man, you don't have to hear it. <laughs> no, no. Oh, Trust or, me. Oh, I, I heard a digital click in that. Didn't you hear that? No, let's run another one. Yeah, those kind of mistakes. <laughs> it happens. Very nice. Okay, that concludes our questions. I'm going to put 30 seconds more on the clock and allow you to either answer for me a question you wish I had asked, shamelessly plug something of your own or of someone else's for that matter, ask me a question, whatever you like, it's 30 seconds, go. Okay, so how I keep myself fresh because the business of the music industry will tear you down so fast along with artists. The, the way I keep myself fresh is to make sure I go back and listen to music that I listened to when I was a kid that made me fall in love with music and make me fall in love with being a musician and want to do this for a living. What do you do to bring yourself fresh? Exactly the same thing. I go back and listen to stuff. And in fact, it's interesting because uh, a question that I had, uh, okay. <laughs> As it went on anyway. But a, yeah. a question that I had for somebody recently was the idea of what do you wish you could hear again for the first time? Because, you know, when you're listening to a track for the first time, there's a certain impression that you get that you don't get after you've heard it a hundred times. And we know this especially from having mixed stuff. You know, how often are you mixing things and you just go, oh, my God, I can't even hear this anymore. You know, so yep. it, it's true. And a lot of times I'll go back and listen to stuff, either stuff I've worked on, you know, 10, 20 years ago, or, you know, some record that I haven't heard in ages. And, you know, it's interesting because on the one hand, music is something that we're so incredibly inundated by that, you know, really we listen to it constantly in our work. You know, I had... I mean, I had a time when I would listen to, you know, news radio or something on the way home or an audio book rather than listen to any more music because, oh, my God, I've been listening to music for 10 solid hours. Exactly. But it's true. You know, that's we do what we love, man. Yep. Yep. I wonder what Rubber Soul would sound like if I listened to it for the very first time. Wow. You know, there you go. Yeah. There's an album I've heard every you know, my entire life. Yep. my entire life since I first remember. So, yep. Good point. Tim Dolber, thanks for being our guest. Thank you for having me. Welcome to 30 Second Chances, where we ask for... Yeah. <laughs> See what happens? Okay. Oh, red light syndrome. 